Creating line art in 3D is essential if you want to create stylized renders. More and more 3D studios are creating stylized movies and they all use line art in some way to enhance the visuals. So today I'll walk you through seven different ways of making line art in Blender. Let's start off with one of the most common ones and this is called the inverted hull technique. The basic concept is that we expand our mesh, then give it a black material. Then we can invert this expanded mesh and give it a special material so that instead of blocking the main mesh, it will show up behind it. We can do this in Blender by adding a solidify modifier. If we change the offset to 1, you'll see your mesh inflate. Now let's go to the materials tab, make a new material and change it to a background shader. This is just a shader that doesn't react to any lighting in our scene. Now make it whatever color you want. The most important part here is to enable back face culling. In 3D software, your model will have a front and a back face. We can see this in Blender by enabling the face orientation overlay. Anything that is blue is a front face and red is a back face. So when we enable back face culling, we're telling Blender that we want to see through any faces that are backwards. Now go back to the solidify modifier and we can invert the mesh. We can do this by flipping the normals under the normals tab. Now we just need to assign our material. Blender does this with slots, so just increase both of these numbers until your outline shows up. In my case, I have nine materials, so I'm using the ninth slot. You should now see your outline and you can change the size of it if you need to. We have a pretty nice outline, but you'll see that there are some areas that don't look right. Because we're expanding the mesh, this expanded mesh is actually intersecting other parts of our model. So you would need to go into edit mode and move parts of your model so that the outline isn't intersecting anymore. We can also get creative with the outlines by defining the thickness of them using a vertex group. Instead of having a constant thickness, I'm going to create a new vertex group called thickness. And in weight paint mode, I'm just going to use the gradient tool and draw a gradient on the model. Now back in the solidify modifier, we could use this vertex group and you'll see that the outline changes based on our weight painting. You can also control the influence of this vertex group using the factor input. This is great for removing certain areas that don't look good or making certain lines thicker. All you have to do is paint the thickness using weight painting. This method is great for getting outlines. It's not so good at doing details, but the great thing about this is that we can export this directly into a game engine and it works perfectly. If we do, however, want to add some details to our character, we can do this by simply using materials. Using a black material, we can go in and start setting the materials on certain faces of our mesh to add lines. This is as simple as it gets. All we're doing is making black faces on the model to define our lines. We can then go into edit mode, and if we press G twice, we can slide the vertices to change the thickness of our lines. If you want some specific shapes, we can use the knife tool K and cut whatever shape we want. Then we just assign the material to these new faces. This method is great for getting sharp detail, but it does rely on the topology, so you may have to change your model for the lines to work correctly. This next method uses something called vertex colors. Most game engines and 3D softwares can use vertex colors in interesting ways. For example, some older games use vertex colors to act as lighting for the scene. Before game engines were powerful enough to have lighting systems and ray trace lighting, an artist could go in and paint the shadows and light using vertex color to give the illusion of more detailed lighting. So back in Blender, instead of going to edit mode or sculpt mode, there's another one called vertex paint. Blender 4.0 has made this process very easy, so everything's already set up for you. If you want, we can also enable the wireframe overlay to allow us to see our wireframe. Now you can start drawing in the model. To see our lines on our original texture, we can go to the shader editor. In here, we can add a color attribute node and select the vertex colors that we just created. Now, if I mix these with our base texture, we can see our line art. By default, all the lines are quite blurry, but we can fix this by selecting faces in edit mode, and then in vertex paint mode, we can enable the face selection paint mask. Now we can draw and it will stay within the faces. Alternatively, if we press Ctrl X, we can set the vertex colors for the selected faces and they'll stay sharp this way. Now you can start modifying the topology to suit your lines. You might need to move some vertices or cut them with the knife tool, and then you can select these faces and in vertex paint, fill in the lines. Alternatively, if you didn't want to have to select the faces each time, you could just paint your vertex colors with the brush, and then in the shader editor, you could add a math node, change it to greater than zero, and this will give you sharp lines based on your drawing. You would still have to adjust your topology to suit, but it's quicker than selecting faces each time. The benefit to this method over the materials method is that this is non-destructive. So instead of changing the material for certain faces, our material stays the same, but we can go in and just change the vertex colors in certain areas to create our line art. It's not useful for every model, but it's a valid approach and it's flexible. 
Next up is a more creative way of making line art, and that's just drawing on a texture. You'll have seen this method used in games like Borderlands and the Telltale games, and all we're doing here is drawing the detail directly onto the model's texture. We can switch over to the Texture Paint tab, and at the top of the window, find the Texture Slots button. Change it from Material to Single Image, and if you have an existing image, select it from the drop-down menu, or you can create a new one. Now all we have to do is start painting on our model. To create sharp lines, we can change the fall-off of our brush to the square one, and this will make the brush sharp. Depending on the resolution of your texture, you might end up seeing the individual pixels, and that's one of the downsides to this method. It's very quick and easy to create the line details, but to get plain lines, you might have to create a 4K or 8K texture, which can lead to memory problems eventually. Also, if you try and close Blender, it will give you a warning, telling you that you've some unsaved images. Just make sure to save these, otherwise you'll lose your progress. A lot of games have used hand-painted textures to create some very stylized results, so if that's what you're after, then texture painting is perfect for you. The next method uses floating planes that sit just on top of the mesh. You can see here that I have some mesh planes for the eyebrows and mouth. These are actually just hidden inside the model, and when I animate the face, I just move them outside so that they're visible. This is one of the better ways to do line art, because these lines will be very sharp, we're not changing the main model, and we also have the freedom to manipulate and move these mesh planes however we want. You can create these planes very easily by selecting some faces of your model, we can then duplicate them with Shift D and inflate them with Alt S. This will push them out slightly. Now we can shape this like any other mesh. You can make it thinner by pressing G twice to slide vertices. You can merge points together with M, and if there's not enough detail, you can select your edges and bevel them with Control B to smooth out any harsh angles. Then just give them your line art material and you're done. This is one of my favorite ways to do line art because it's so expressive and if you animate your face, you can see these lines appearing and disappearing, which gives it a really nice effect. Also, all of this transfers over to game engines, so you can have these really expressive lines in your games and they're very efficient because they don't add too many vertices to your model and they don't require any high resolution textures or special materials. These last two methods are both Blender specific, so they won't work in any other software. The first being the grease pencil. The Grease Pencil allows us to paint on the model similar to texture painting, but this time we're not painting on a texture, we're painting virtual strokes on the model, and these strokes don't exist as a mesh. The simple way of drawing on the model is by creating a new blank Grease Pencil object, and with this object selected, in the top left, you'll see there's a new Draw Mode button that's specific to Grease Pencil objects. Now with the Draw Brush selected, you can start drawing in your scene. You can change the brush at the top left to get some different looks. You'll notice that the lines are floating in space, so to fix this, we can change the stroke placement at the top of the screen to surface, and now we can draw on the model. You might need to change the stroke offset if the lines are intersecting with the mesh, or if they're too far off the mesh, but we can now start drawing our details. One cool thing about the Grease Pencil is that we can apply modifiers to the lines. In the Modifiers tab of the Grease Pencil object, we can choose from a number of different effects to make the lines more dynamic and stylized. I'll keep this simple and just add some thickness variation to the lines with the thickness modifier. All we have to do here is enable the uniform thickness checkbox and then go to the custom curve section. You'll already see the lines changing, but if we make the curve into a hill like this, then we can see that the ends of the line are thinner. And the cool thing is that these modifiers will apply to any lines you draw from now on. One other modifier that we can add is the line art modifier, and this will be the most useful modifier for most people because by adding the line art modifier, and changing the source type to scene, assigning both a layer and material, you'll see that your whole scene now has line art. If you don't see any lines, that's because this is all based off of the camera view. So if your object or scene isn't in view of a camera, then it won't work. If we move this modifier above the thickness modifier, you'll see that all of these new lines now use the same thickness curve. I'll walk you through a few of these settings for the line art modifier because some of them are very useful. Underneath edge types, you'll see a bunch of checkboxes and these determine how and when the lines will show up. Let's just disable everything and go one by one. At the top, we can change what way the lines are detected. Are they detected based on the contours of the model, or do they only show up on the silhouette of the model? In certain use cases, you might only want an outline along the silhouette of your character. The crease threshold doesn't really do anything, you can try changing it, and sometimes it might help. The big one is intersections. In Blender, as far as I know, the line art modifier is the only way to detect and draw lines where two objects intersect. Material Borders is fairly self-explanatory, it just draws a line where two materials meet. The next one is my most used, and I think the most versatile, and this is the Edge Marks. To see how this works, we need to go back into Edit Mode. 
I'm just going to select a few edges, and now if I press Ctrl E and go all the way down to the bottom, there's two options that you probably never noticed before. Mark Freestyle Edges and Clear Freestyle Edges. Let's mark these edges and they'll turn green. And then if we go back to Object Mode, you'll see that we now have lines showing up where we mark those edges. If any of the other methods don't draw lines where you want, you can go and mark them manually. This is great for getting fine control over where you want your lines to show up. The Grease Pencil is one of the easier methods because of the Line Art modifier and because we can see exactly what we're drawing. But the big downside to this is that lines that are drawn manually are not attached to the mesh. So when we move our character, these lines won't move. You can pair them to the object and then the lines will move with it, but if you try to animate your character with the rig or shape keys, the lines won't follow. So play around with the Grease Pencil modifiers because you can get some pretty cool effects, but now we'll move on to the last and my favorite method of drawing line art, Freestyle. Ever since Grease Pencil came out a couple of years ago, people have forgotten about Freestyle, but I think it's the best way to do line art. It doesn't do everything, like intersections, but you can get some really cool results with it. Let's start off by just enabling Freestyle, and we can do this in the Render tab. All the way at the bottom of this menu, there's a checkbox called Freestyle. Click it, and then press F12 to render your scene. Rendering is the only way to see Freestyle, as it's a post-process effect, so it won't show up in the viewport. You can already see that we have some lines, but it's not perfect, but we can delve deeper into the settings under the View Layers tab. Again, at the bottom of this menu, we have all the freestyle settings. The first one that we're going to change is the crease angle. We can turn this up or down and see the effect that it makes. Turning it down will show fewer lines because fewer lines will be above the threshold, and turning it up will mean that every line will get rendered. You have to find a balance, but anywhere between 100 and 140 is always a good starting point. Then we can scroll down to the edge type settings. You'll recognize most of these from the grease pencil line art settings, but again, just play around with them. Go through them one by one and see what effect they have. That's the best way of figuring out what each setting does. I think the most useful one, similar to the Grease Pencil, is the Edge Mark setting. If you're ever not seeing a line where you want to, you can go in and press Ctrl E and mark them as freestyle edges. I'm going to leave everything at the default settings for now and skip a few sections and go down to Freestyle Geometry. The Geometry section is where we can manipulate the image before the lines are drawn, and it will determine how and when to draw the lines. By default, it's set to sampling, which just samples the original render image, but we can add modifiers to this. Let's just do something simple by adding the Perlin Noise 2D modifier. Render your image, and you can see the effect it's had. So now we've taken the original image and added some noise to it. But let's say I want something more sketchy. I want my lines to be a bit more rough and not follow the render exactly. So instead of using the sampling modifier, remove it and add the guiding lines modifier. Make sure to put it at the top of the list, like regular modifiers, they operate from top to bottom. Now you can see that instead of sampling the original image, the Guiding Lines modifier is just detecting some of the points from our image and drawing straight lines between them. This doesn't look great, but we can change how long these lines are back in the Freestyle Stroke section. Change the Chaining Type to Sketchy, and then under the Splitting section, we can tell Freestyle how long we want the lines to be using the 2D Length option. Now if we render, we can see some sketchy lines. Go ahead and change the length of the lines to change how rough and sketchy they look. We can make these lines look even more sketchy by changing the thickness under the Freestyle Thickness section. You'll see once again that we can add modifiers to this, and we're going to add an Along Stroke modifier. And I'm sure you can imagine that this will allow us to change the thickness of the line along the stroke. But instead of just using linear mapping, we can change this to a curve. This curve represents the stroke length on the x-axis and the stroke thickness on the y-axis. So if we make our curve into a hill like this, we can make the ends of the lines thin and the center of the lines thicker. We can also change the opacity of these lines under the Freestyle Alpha section to make them a bit more see-through, and then we can also add a noise modifier to the opacity to have some variation. Now we get something that looks a lot like a sketchy pencil. One of my favorite features is under the Freestyle Color section. The Material modifier will allow us to change the outline color for different materials, so we can get some cool colored pencil effects where different parts of the mesh have different outline colors. We can do this by going to the Object Material Properties, and once again, hidden at the bottom of this menu is the Freestyle Line section. I have a few materials, so I'm just going to change the freestyle color for all of them, and now you'll see when we render, all of these sections now have different colors. So now we have some cool sketchy lines, but I also want to add a nice thick outline to my character. So another great thing about freestyle is that we can have multiple types of lines using line sets. I'm going to rename this one to Sketchy and add a new one with the plus icon. 
Now we can control all the settings of this new line set without changing the sketchy one. I'm just going to make this an outline by enabling only the contour checkbox and making it a bit thicker. Now if we render, you'll see that we have our sketchy lines and our thick outline. You can also reorder the line sets because they're drawn from bottom to top, so if something isn't showing up correctly, you can move them around so that they're drawn in the right order. This is one of the really powerful things about freestyle, that you can have multiple sets of lines, so you could get some cool effects where different parts of your scene have different line art. Maybe you want the edge marks of your model to be thin and sketchy, but you want a really strong outline around your character, or even have a character with a completely different line art style. You can do all of that with line sets. The last thing I want to mention about freestyle is that if we enable the freestyle lines as a render pass, we can actually do compositing and the lines will be completely separate. So if you wanted to generate sketchy outlines of your characters, you could do that with render passes. Or if you wanted the lines to glow, or maybe you wanted the main image to have the new Blender 4.0 Kuahara filter, but keep the line art clean, you can do that with freestyle and render passes. So there you have it, seven ways to generate line art in Blender. But keep in mind, you don't just have to use one of these methods, mix them together. Solidify is good at outlines, Grease Pencil can do intersections, Mesh planes can give you nice detail, and textures are quick and easy to draw. You'll see in all of these examples that I've used multiple methods to achieve the final result, and hopefully now you know what the different methods can be used for. So play around with line art, have fun, and thanks for watching.